All righty. Long question ahead. A bunch of stuff from chapter nine, um, plus our definitions. So let's dive in. The statement reads, an electromagnetic plane wave of angular frequency omega is traveling in the x direction through the vacuum. It is polarized in the y direction, so at least we know what kind of wave it looks like, and the amplitude of the electric field is E naught. A. Write down the electric and magnetic fields, E as a uh, function of x, y, z, and t, and B as a function of x, y, z, and t. B. The same wave is observed from the inertial system S bar moving in the x direction with the speed v relative to the original system s. Find the electric and magnetic fields in s bar and express them in terms of the s bar coordinates, so e bar of x, y, z, t bar and b bar of x, y, z, t bar. Um, almost there, okay. And then for part c, what is the frequency omega bar in the wave in S bar. Interpret this result. What is the wavelength lambda bar of the S of the wave in S bar? From omega bar and lambda bar, determine the speed of the waves in S bar. Is this what we expected? All right. So part D wants to know what is the ratio of the intensity to S bar to the intensity in S? Ooh, interesting. As a youth, Einstein wondered what an electromagnetic wave would look like if you could run alongside run along beside it at the speed of light what can you tell him about the amplitude frequency intensity of the wave as re approaches c so we got an interesting question here it's a lot of you know a lot of busy work but i think that this is an appropriate um application of these transformation rules to the thing we dedicated a whole chapter to the electromagnetic waves so let's uh, go ahead and dive in all right, so for part A, we're modifying the general form of, a tr of traveling in the x direction with polarization in the y direction, where k, the wave number, is omega over c, and picking delta equals zero for convenience, we get this familiar form, okay? Again, this is something we've kind of seen before, no big deal. This is kind of what we expect to see. Um, this is uh, the real part of the complex exponential. So everything is coming back from chapter nine now. We also showed how B was equal to one over uh, one over C, K hat cross E. So uh, propagation direction K hat. Um, so let's see that that's where we get Y cross or yeah. Um, yeah, so we had uh, Y cross everything else traveling in these. Uh, so X cross Y gives a Z. Um, so everything there, we're fine. Polarization direction changes, they're mutually orthogonal, everything looks good. So B, we have to use the transformation rules, noting that E naught equal E bar naught equal E naught, or excuse me, E bar X equal E X equals zero, and E Z bar is equal to gamma E Z plus V B Y equals zero. Again, sense of where we're defined in Z and Y, um, we just have to be wary of how these vectors are actually defined as far as one component in the coordinate spaces themselves. All right, so let's continue on. So since we can transform uh, e, uh, y, since e is in the y direction, the bar or the transform field uh, component is equal to gamma ey minus vbz. And of course, we have those two things. If we factor out everything that's common with them, we're left with an alpha, or excuse me, a gamma times one minus V over C, uh, which we could just write one minus beta, but we'll just condense that as alpha here just for the sake of uh, uh, completeness, or rather ease of convenience. Again, there is no Z component in this field, so that's zero. Um, and we should see that BY goes to zero since uh, the is no BY component and there is no EZ component. So the only component that can transform is the BZ component. And we see how it transforms. Plug it all in and we get a similar situation here. Alpha and then we have E naught over C cosine again. So you see our forms are very similar as they probably should be. Now we see here that um, alpha B 
being one minus V over C times gamma is actually equal to one minus V over C times the square root. So we can kind of uh, tie this down. We notice that gamma is the difference of squares if we consider V over C squared as a whole square term. So hence we get one plus V over C and one minus V over C. So if we put this bracket term inside the uh, square root, we have to square it. And you see this is where we get a cancellation of a factor in the numerator and denominator. So we have a minus in the numerator plus in the denominator. Now the inverse Lorentz transformation tells us that we have x equal gamma x bar plus vt bar. So if we want to solve this through and resubstitute everything in, we have uh, kx minus omega t is equal to gamma. And now we just have to plug in what we know for x and t. So here you see x here, t here, and simplify what you can do. You'll get all the x bars right here, all the t bars right here. And when you do that, you see that the thing in the parentheses turns to the k bar, and the thing in the parentheses here turns to the new omega bar. So, uh, one second. so moving forward, we see exactly what the k bar and omega bar need to be. Now let's try to simplify it down. If that's the case, and we sub everything in via definitions, um, we see that we can go ahead and do that here. Omega over C gives us K, so we can factor K out. So what we do here. Now we're left with the same factor of gamma times one minus V over C. So we get alpha K. That's cool. Same thing with the omega. It works the same way. Omega bar gives us alpha omega. How cool is that? That being said, our conclusion is that the transformed goes in the Y direction only. And we have the barred coordinates. So we just talked about those. Same thing in the E, or same thing for the B, where um, E bar naught is equal to alpha E naught, because we have that alpha factor, but they follow the same mimicking form. That's freaking cool. We have K bar equal to alpha K, omega bar equal alpha omega, and then we see what alpha is with the minus and plus. Um, so now we're good to go. As far as part C is concerned, however, the frequency omega bar, which is equal to alpha omega, if we plug in the actual alpha, we get a change in VC over change in uh, what difference in VC plus the sum of VC. This is the Doppler shift for light. Okay, so the same kind of Doppler frequency we hear about with ambulances and sound, this is the Doppler shift for light. So this kind of shifting is really cool to study. Uh, you may have heard of things like redshift or blue shift. That's because of all of these things as well. So we have lambda bar is equal to 2 pi over k, and then plug all those definitions through. So we see that lambda bar is equal to lambda over alpha. The velocity of the wavelength of the wave in s bar is v bar is equal to omega bar over 2 pi times lambda bar. And you see things cancel, and we're left right back with omega lambda over 2 pi which is c so yes this is exactly what we would expect the uh, velocity of light wave is the same in any uh inertial system but this uh this this light doppler shift thing is definitely something to be noted for later um and you see that being used in other uh branches of physics so cool result there Finally, in part D, though, we have since the intensity goes like E squared, the ratio is I bar over I is E naught bar squared over E naught squared. And we see that we get an alpha squared pickup there and we can cancel the E naughts there. Boom, boom. We like that. Um, and then we're just left with alpha squared, which we saw what that was. Again, that's one minus V squared V over C one plus V over C. So that's pretty cool to see, man. That's pretty cool. Um, but as we can see, if we approach this limit here, we get uh, 1 minus C over C, which is 1 minus 1, which goes to 0. So the intensity would go to 0 in that limit. Um, but for our friend, little Einstein, the amplitude, frequency, and intensity of the light will all decrease to 0 as you run faster and faster. It'll get so faint you won't be able to see it, and so redshifted even your night vision goggles won't help. But it'll still be going at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second relative to you. 
Sorry about that. Sincerely, Relativity. Our friend Relativity is coming through once again, and this was another great example of how we take uh, the transformation rules and find out what we expect in another frame of reference, and yet the results are still as compatible as ever. That is so darn cool.